Coming up on Ag Week TV, Ponzi scheme grain buyer Hunter Hansen is sentenced in federal court. USDA officials tour North Dakota to discuss disaster assistance. South Dakota has record crop insurance payouts due to flooding. And we'll look at innovations for harvesting feed with the wet fall. Welcome to Ag Week TV, I'm Michelle Rook. Our program originates this week from the National Association of Farm Broadcasting Convention here in Kansas City, Missouri. The meeting brings together farm broadcasters in a cross-section of ag industry and companies to network and report on the nation's top innovations, ag issues, legislation, and policy. We'll have more from the convention later in the show. But our top story this week is the tale of a young grain trader that ends up with a federal prison sentence. A federal judge in Bismarck, North Dakota, sentenced 22-year-old Hunter Hansen to eight years in federal prison for defrauding farmers and elevators out of millions of dollars in the region. He's also agreed to pay restitution of $11 million. But as Mickle Pates reports, victims say no sentence will ever make them whole. Michelle, the federal case against Hunter Hansen ended with his sentencing here at the William L. Guy Federal Courthouse in Bismarck, North Dakota. Hansen's attorney Lucas Wynn of Fargo asked the judge for leniency because Hunter is so young, just 21 when most of the crimes were committed. But the judge gave Hansen the maximum allowed under the guidance, and U.S. Attorney Drew Wrigley says he agrees. If I've ever seen a case where uh, the victim impact statement uh, in a courtroom may be impacted very directly, the sentence, I think it was today. You know, the Schmaltz family coming in and very eloquently articulating not just that they were harmed by Hunter Hansen's fraudulent activities, but the detail of that harm and the implications, the waves of impact uh, on their farming operation, on their health, and on the other farmers, uh, I thought was uh, quite moving in that courtroom. The Schmaltz family told the judge their farm has been ruined by Hansen's actions. The people affected in this whole fiasco will never be made whole and never be, be the same as they were before. Get out of here. Hansen's family attended the sentencing but didn't want to talk on camera. You're lucky somebody don't punch you. So the last step for this young, fast-trading, Ponzi-scheming grain trader will be federal prison. It doesn't matter how long or short a time he serves, justice is not served because the people affected will suffer for the rest of their lives. For Ag Week, this is Mikkel Pates in Bismarck, North Dakota. And you can read much more in the next Ag Week magazine or at agweek.com. Joining us is David Shem with the Farm Service Agency. And let's talk a little bit about farm program sign up, ARC PLC. You're encouraging producers to try to get in there. I know we've got guys in the field, but sooner rather than later, right? Yeah, absolutely. You know, we don't want producers to wait to that last uh, day or to sign up. That's just obviously not going to work out well for them. So I think the key here is, is that we have a deadline coming up uh, mid-March, March 15th, for our 2019 sign up uh, for our programs, and then June 30th for a 2020 year pro, uh, program. Uh, both years are now open for them to sign up, so come into our offices. I have the opportunity to update their yields as well. If things change for those producers and they want to sign up for a different program, uh, they can always come back in before those deadline dates and sign, uh, change their mind and change which programs they're signed up for. And David, you're also encouraging dairy farmers to sign up for the DMC program for 2020. Get in there and get uh, signed up for a dairy margin coverage program there. Again, this program is not the old MPP. It's a, it's a much more uh, program focused on helping our, our dairy producers out there manage those risks there. Get in there. Those margins can change. That calculation is done on a monthly basis. Maybe it didn't pay out last month, but it could definitely pay out in the future. Uh, so go ahead and get into our offices there. Thanks so much, David. USDA Undersecretary Bill Northey was in North Dakota visiting with farmers and talking with them about the assistance the government is providing through the latest series of disasters. He held an ag roundtable with farm leaders as well as senators and the governor and at the same time announced that much of the state would be covered by a federal disaster declaration. But as Rose Dunn reports, the challenges may continue into the spring. I've heard it several times, certainly heard it from your leadership, um, but heard it from you as well. This is unprecedented. Uh, most of our programs are not written for times like these. They're written for normal times, and so they don't sometimes work. Unprecedented is a word that came up often when USDA Undersecretary Bill Northey held a roundtable with leaders of North Dakota farm groups. Growers, uh, I don't think, are typically the type that are all begging. 
but uh, this is an unprecedented year and any help could be appreciated. Northey heard their concerns and questions about the current state of ag and what's being done in Washington to help, although there are concerns that there is not enough funding for disaster programs. I think you're going to find your way short at $3 billion. I think you're going to be amazed at what you're going to see coming in. There's no quick fix sitting up here. There is nothing that's going to be that we can snap our fingers and we can have 2020 get back to normal. We're going to have to, you know, hunker in, and this is for the long haul. Another word that came up often is resilient. Dan Youngren of the Red River Valley Sugar Beet Growers Association says although farmers have endured heavy rains, flooding, early snow, and freezing, they are resilient. We're going to make it. With billions of dollars of crops still in the field in North Dakota alone, Northy acknowledges a rough road ahead. Nobody's going to be made whole in this. Nobody would rather have this than, than the crop. But our efforts are to do as much as we can to be able to help get you through to next year. In Argusville, this is Rose Dunn for Ag Week. U.S. Ag Secretary Sonny Perdue has also announced that another round of market facilitation program payments will be made to farmers. Farmers say the aid doesn't make them whole and they just want the trade war to be over. It really doesn't make you money um, and I'd rather have trade. I'm really tired of the aid. I mean, I appreciate it. The administration, I appreciate their efforts, but it's just, it really sits wrong with farmers. It sits wrong with uh, the taxpayer that we have to even do this. No details have been released on the amount, but payments would be disseminated in late November to early December. I'll be back later in this show with market analysis as well as news about crop insurance payouts. But up next on Ag Week TV, we'll talk to a rancher that's looking at a new way to store his wet cattle feed. Small or large, Superior Grain Equipment has a storage solution for you with a wide variety of bin options and accessories, along with site planning and superior customer service. Plus, from top to bottom, we offer the industry's best bins and warranties to protect your products and your grain storage investment. Get superior quality, protection, and reliability with generations of experience and dependability. Make the superior choice today with Superior Grain Equipment. Micro Essentials is a unique product. What makes it different than other products, it has four different nutrients, nitrogen, phosphorus, sulfur, which is two forms of sulfur, and zinc in every granule. The sulfate sulfur, we get the bulk of the use of it the first year. The elemental breaks down over time. So it's a huge benefit for the grower. It's giving them the opportunity to get more nutrients in one. Every so often, technology revolutionizes an industry. We introduce Wheelman, an easy to use and simple to install, complete auto steering system that any farmer can afford. Wheelman works with over 700 tractor makes and models, and there are no additional fees. You buy direct, it ships to your home, and installs in just a couple of hours. Starting at $39.95, Wheelman has arrived. Learn more at handsfreefarm.com slash arrived. Ready for more? The new Fent 900 Vario is impressive on every level. With groundbreaking features, you'll be ready for everyday challenges now and in the future. New smart connectivity solutions make the Fent 900 series from Butler Machinery an intelligent choice for your farm. We're also proud to carry the Fent Ideal, a new combine for a new era of farming. Designed to be automated in operation, the Ideal Combine is already setting industry standards for efficiency and output. Visit butlermachinery.com to schedule a demo at your operation. Seriously? When you're in the registered cattle business, it's vital to have enough winter feed to ensure proper calving in the spring. In this week's Ag Week cover story, Mikkel Pates visited one operation that's improvising this year because their cover crop forage supply was so wet they were afraid it would rot and they'd run out of feed. There ain't any real good quality feed put up this year. 
Jerry Delaney, his wife Shelley, and their son Nick run Delaney Herefords at Lake Benton, Minnesota. It's been in the family since 1936, and last year they calved out 220 cows. They may have to cut back to 175 next year, in part because they're worried about having enough feed. Some of their corn couldn't be planted this year, so they planted a cover crop on prevented planting acres, hoping to hay or graze it. When rains kept them from getting it dry, they put it up wet in silage bales. We cut it, baled it up, put them in a nice white row. It just got so wet that it just, it would kind of rot on the ground and you know, it just wouldn't have any quality. So the only way we could get it up um, was to put in those, in those tubes. Delaney hopes to get up to two years of feed out of this, but now he has to worry about the lower feed value and the bales freezing because of the high water content. And then uh, once you cut into them, you got to feed them within a week or two, otherwise they start to spoil. Son Nick joined the farm full-time after graduating from college in 2017. Although Nick acknowledges this is a rough time to be starting out, he's willing to tough it out. If you don't get the worst thrown at you, then you don't know really what you're made of. And I mean, if you want to do it in these conditions, then you really want to do it. At Lake Benton, Minnesota, this is Michael Pates for Ag Week. You can read much more in the next Ag Week magazine or at agweek.com. With the late harvest and immature crops, feed quality is going to be a real question mark for dairy producers as well going into the winter. Many operations had to chop corn that hadn't hit black layer or even cover crops for silage. It wasn't always put up at the proper moisture, which may mean lower feed value. However, producers won't know for sure until the silage has fermented out. Just do a good job of testing and really work closely with the nutritionist to figure out how to utilize this, how to supplement it. Uh, we can add more grain for energy, obviously. Shaver says dairy producers can also utilize byproducts to supplement fiber or energy deficits in the ration. He says feed value is also highly variable with this year's alfalfa crop due to widespread winter kill. Like many other crops, sugar beet growers had a tough harvest this year because of the wet and freezing conditions. American Crystal Farmer shareholders who had to leave beets in the field this fall will have to pay the company $343 an acre for unharvested acres. The money will be used to cover the company's fixed costs. American Crystal officially ended their harvest last weekend, leaving roughly a third of the acres in the ground. That equals about 4 million tons of beets. Sugar beet agronomist Tom Peters says there are some important things growers need to do now and in the spring. He says the plants need to be defoliated to accelerate the release of nitrogen for next year. He advises against fall tillage. Leaving the beets in the ground will speed their decay. Peters recommends planting soybeans next year if possible to use the available nitrogen. It's going to be challenging with spring tillage. We're going to need more fertilizer and we're also going to have to probably increase our planting density because we're going to have some challenges with planting around these beet carcasses. Peter says Mindac growers in the Southern Valley had a better harvest thanks to more cooperative weather. Ahead on Ag Week TV, we'll go back to Michelle in Kansas City with information on crop insurance payouts and the grain markets. Upgrade your trailer to electric with the Rolltech Electric System from AgriCover. Strong, flexible pivot arms and motor mount rotate and telescope, allowing the roll tube to rise and flex over heaped loads. The positive automatic lock is impossible to back off to control the flow of grain. This integrated system uses one wireless remote to operate up to 10 tarps and hoppers, keeping your driver out of the dust, rain, and harm's way. See the Rolltech system in action at an AgriCover dealer near you. Martinson Ag Risk Management offers a variety of crop marketing and crop insurance packages to our customers. With over 40 years of experience, our dedicated staff works hard to ensure you get the best advice on crop insurance, marketing, and risk management. Contact Randy or any of the staff at Martinson Ag Risk Management today at 701-205-4200 or visit us online at martinsonag.com. How can one tillage tool handle most field conditions, residue types, and tillage practices? It takes a renegade, the Summers VRT Renegade. Switch from vertical to aggressive tillage and anywhere in between. Adjust blade angles, tillage depth, and more on the go, all from an iPad. Get the tillage results you want, like only the Summers VRT Renegade can. For more information or a demo, contact your Summers dealer. 
More successful seasons start with more freedom in the field. The exclusive agronomic and economic incentives of the FMC Freedom Pass program expand your crop protection options from pre-plant to harvest. More than 40 FMC products qualify. 40 plus herbicides, insecticides, and fungicides growers know and trust. And FMC rewards you for making independent, innovative crop protection decisions, not for making your seed purchase. Visit your FMC retailer or fmcfreedompass.com today. Steffes Group, selling land and the equipment to farm it since 1960. If you're interested in selling or have questions about our auction process, head to our website at steffesgroup.com to contact us at any one of our four locations located throughout the Midwest. You can also visit and subscribe to our YouTube channel to view all of our auction previews and recaps to stay up to date on the market in your area. Joining us from RCIS is George Underwood. Let's talk a little bit about the historical amount of claims that we've had because of flood this year in terms of insurance. Yeah, Michelle, this has been an epic year of claims from coast to coast and border to border. And South Dakota actually led the nation in those flood-related claims. I know that we had a high volume with RCIS and looking at RMA's data, they actually provide some maps of indemnities paid and it does show that the upper Midwest, specifically eastern North and South Dakota, had a higher than, than usual volume of claims this year. So if farmers have to leave crop out in the field over the winter, what does that mean in terms of its insurability? So there's a December 10th date that is considered the end of insurance period. Uh, as the December 10th date nears, we are obligated to make appraisals of the crop that's in the field. However, if there is a continual cause of loss and the, the farmer never has the opportunity to harvest that crop, uh, there are certain situations that apply that the insurance continues until they do get an opportunity or until the crop is of no value or there is no crop remaining. And farmers that took prevented plant this year and may have to take it again next year, what happens? If there is a continual cause of loss, then the farmer can, if they haven't claimed prevented planting on the same cause of loss except for one year, they can call, uh, claim prevented planting a second year. If there is a break in the cause of loss, then they have basically back-to-back -back preventive planning, but for different reasons, and there's no limit to them claiming preventive planning in those situations. But the best thing to do with all of these questions is go to your insurance provider, right? Absolutely. Talk to the agent. If the agent doesn't know the, the answers, they have avenues that they can explore, whether it's from their specific AIP, or approved insurance provider, or by going to RMA directly and asking questions of RMA. All right. Well, some great information that you shared with us today. Thanks so much, George Underwood with RCIS. After some record cold temperatures this last week in much of the region, what's ahead for the rest of November and how will it impact harvest? Here's our AgriWeather Outlook. After going through very consistently cold weather for the first couple of weeks of November, the coldest of the weather will be shifting into the eastern United States. And out here in the Great Plains and much of uh, the western Corn Belt, it's actually going to be moderating a little bit. A few days will even go above average. But it does look temporary. A couple of little weather systems may bring some snow to some parts of the northern plains. And before this two-week period is over, I am expecting that cold weather to come back. Let's check out the weather pattern. The cold weather clearly in the eastern part of North America right now. That's where the troughiness in the jet stream lies. It is split a bit, so that's going to weaken that cold air mass a little bit, but not really all that much. And as we go through the week this coming week, it's actually going to be sort of not that bad in much of the northern plains, and some areas will actually bring on a few mild days. Toward the end of the week, a little bit of troughiness in the west, but again, because it is a split flow pattern, the coldest of the weather will retain its uh, position there in the eastern part of North America and especially the northeastern part. However, as we transition into week two, I am expecting a change next week that's actually going to send the troughiness back to the west and allow that cold weather to begin dropping southward. That sets up southwest to northeast flow in the Great Plains 
And that means there's going to be the possibility of a storm. So this coming week, we're looking for precipitation, some rain mostly in the northeast. Looks like the Pacific Northwest, northern Rockies will get some rain, higher elevation snow, and maybe one northern plain system that looks kind of slushy, not that cold later in the week. It's the second week toward the end of November, maybe around Thanksgiving time. Models are suggesting they might have to watch the pattern for a storm system in the northern part of the Great Plains. Very very iffy at two weeks out, but it is something to keep an eye on for the time being. This is Dennis Beliski reminding you, we do auctions and we do them well. You've built your operation with hard work and when it's time to sell, all or part, you deserve the best. Details from repairs and preparation to promotion and settlements are not routine. Chances are you'll only do this once, so we'll tailor an auction just for you and get it done right. On site at your farm or add it to one of our highly successful Alaris Center auctions, we have the skill, reputation, and integrity to meet your needs with best-in-class commitment and quality service. Find us at resourceauction.com or call 701-757-4015. Mother Nature doesn't always cooperate, so when conditions are right, be ready with genuine Case IH parts from Titan Machinery. Only genuine Case IH parts are engineered to keep your equipment running at peak efficiency when you're running around the clock. Don't risk your bottom line with off-brand parts that don't meet the same standards. Visit your local Titan Machinery dealership today to find out why genuine Case IH parts offer the best value and performance for your operation. With the success of the Case IH Diger Quad Track and Magnum Road Track tractors, it's no secret why Case IH is the leader of the track. So it wasn't surprising when the competition started imitating us. But only Case IH offers a five axle design to give you a smoother ride, more power to the ground, with less firming and compaction. Still, we're flattered. In fact, if we weren't already red, <laughs> we'd be blushing. When harvest comes around, time is precious and you don't have a moment to waste. North Star Ag offers the Lofsness Grain Logics Grain Bag Loader to deliver versatile grain storage performance load after load. Lofsness's user-friendly grain baggers are easy to load and unload, perfect to get your harvest in the bag. Uptime is crucial. Keep your crew in the field longer with a fuel trailer from Thunder Creek. And don't forget North Star Ag has Meridian Hopper Bins for any size operation. See our complete new and used equipment inventory at northstarag.com or give us a call. Mayo Manufacturing, your Red River Valley source for Batco. Mayo Manufacturing, your Red River Valley Batco dealer. Welcome back. Joining us with market analysis is Mike Zuzalo. Mike, we're past the November USDA reports, and we didn't get a whole lot of new information from USDA. No updates on harvested acres, for one thing. So do we kick the can down the road here to January in the report? Yeah, I think, unfortunately, we're going to have to do that, Michelle. And I think the biggest feature to the report in November was USDA came in with a corn yield adjustment down on population, not on ear weight or pounds test weight. I think that's coming because because the farmers, especially east of the Mississippi River, are reporting back to me, look, I'm getting 52, 54, 56 pound test weights here, not 58 to 60 or even 62 pounds like we've seen in the last couple years. So I think USDA has some more adjusting down when it comes to the corn due to that girth, due to that test weight. South American weather and their crop production is going to be a big key in the next couple of months here for the market as well, but there's projections already of record Brazilian soybean production. I'm a little bit below 120 right now, and so I'm on the low end. A lot of the private forecasters are at 122, even 123 million metric tons. The five-year average is 117 to about 122. Uh, I think there was enough planting delays and uh, the yield potential is going to be more average, and so I'm more in line with maybe be a 119, 120 million metric ton number. Um, I think the mindset going into January may change if their weather doesn't straighten out because the expectation is that Brazil's past the worst part. And what about the phase one deal with China? Do you think that we'll get something signed here before the December 15th tariffs go into place? 
If we don't, I'm very nervous that it's not going to go well. In other words, I'm going to have to start planning for my hedgers to take more of a defensive posture and be more aggressive on rallies to get hedges in place. Because if we don't get the December 15th uh, tariffs out of the way and, and, and the president uh, goes ahead and pushes those through, that's the big one in terms of toys, smartphones, consumer electronics. That's, that's what will hurt the two biggest economies of the world, in my opinion. And that's where probably both sides will walk away is my fear if we get if those go ahead and go into effect and if that's the case we're going to have to rely more upon supply led rallies like we've been used to and that means they come quickly and they tend tend to leave very quickly as well all right always a pleasure to see you Mike Zuzalo joining us here with market analysis still ahead on Ag Week TV how is colony collapse disorder affecting commercial pollinators dig lay and bury drain tile all in one pass with the Crary Tile Pro Plow. The Crary Tile Pro Plow lays tile up to seven feet deep with boot sizes of four to 12 inches. Advantages of installing drain tile to your field provides increased overall yield, improved soil moisture levels, and controls soil erosion. It pays to tile with a Crary Tile Pro. To locate a dealer near you, visit www.crarytilepro.com. Steffes Group, selling land and the equipment to farm it since 1960. If you're interested in selling or have questions about our auction process, head to our website at steffesgroup.com to contact us at any one of our four locations located throughout the Midwest. You can also visit and subscribe to our YouTube channel to view all of our auction previews and recaps to stay up to date on the market in your area. Every so often, technology revolutionizes an industry. We introduce Wheelman, an easy to use and simple to install, complete auto steering system that any farmer can afford. Wheelman works with over 700 tractor makes and models, and there are no additional fees. You buy direct, it ships to your home, and installs in just a couple of hours. Starting at $39.95, Wheelman has arrived. Learn more at handsfreefarm.com slash arrived. I'm Jenny Garth, and as a mother of three, I know kids worry about a lot of things. Getting enough food to eat shouldn't be one of them. But here in America, that is a real worry for one in five children. Even though we are one of the most food-rich countries in the world, 15 million children don't know where their next meal is coming from. This is unacceptable, and something the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks is working to solve. Instead of accepting that our country lets billions of pounds of surplus food go to waste every year, Feeding America has made it their mission to help families in need by rescuing this food. Through food pantries and meal programs, the nationwide network of food banks provides more than three billion meals, serving virtually every community in the United States, including yours. Join me in supporting Feeding America and your local food bank by visiting feedingamerica.org. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're feeding America. Colony collapse disorder has generated a lot of concern, but the problem seems to have very little effect on commercial pollinators. That's the finding of a new study on the economic impacts of colony collapse disorder among commercial honeybees. Researchers in Montana say they expected to find huge effects of CCD, but they only found small ones. They found consumers pay about 10 cents more on a pound of almonds at the grocery store. Thanks for watching this week's edition of Ag Week TV. Remember, for all your ag news, go to agweek.com. And be sure to follow us on Facebook and Twitter as well. We'll see you next week.